would be nice if ProRes was integrated fully into Windows, but it's not. So in the past, I've had to put up with things like this. This is the uh, website, the current website for Mirazon. Mirazon. Uh, they used to sell ProRes codecs and DNX HD codecs for Windows. You could install them and get ProRes files out of Windows. However, if you believe what you read online, they never really worked anyway. If you just scroll through this forum post, for example, you'll see that uh, the topic is started off by a guy who says, they're not 10-bit anyway. They're all 8-bit output. And really, that defeats the object. You, you're still getting a an intermediate codec to work with, but you're not getting the quality that you would expect. So why would you bother? Well, that's what kind of what I wanted to find out today. I just wanted to have a play with them myself. I I, I purchased these back in the day and, you know, um, enjoyed having a play around with them to start with. But um, I haven't used them for a while. QuickTime's no longer supported on Windows, but I thought I'd give them a quick reinstall and try them out. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to go into After Effects here. I'm going to create a quick a high definition composition nothing too fancy let's do it at uh, let's do it at a nice smooth 50 frames per second and i'm going to import just one bit of footage here that i have on my desktop uh, i'm not sure which one it is hold on a second i think it's the maroon this one this maroon abstract one i'm going to import that into the composition and the reason I'm going to do that is because it's got kind of gradients in it and stuff. But this is from an 8-bit file originally. So I'm going to actually change the color on this composition to 16 bits per channel. And I'm going to blur this so that After Effects is creating its, its own color, essentially, through the effect of blurring it. So let's just uh, click on here, go to Blur. And we'll just do a Gaussian blur on it. That's all right. Doesn't have to be anything wonderful. Repeat, repeat those edge pixels. And what we end up with is something that looks like this. Now, this might not look amazing to you. Because this will be going through YouTube and it'll be compressed and stuff. So, I mean, and also here it's getting uh, quite blocky. But uh, what I want to do here is encode this out using the ProRes codec. So I'm going to just save this project down in After Effects. Let me just save this to the desktop. Let's call it ProRes Test. And the reason I'm doing that is going to put it on the NAS drive and I'm going to go across to my Mac in a second and see whether uh, I'm just going to import it into After Effects on the Mac and export it to ProRes there. So let's stick it in the render queue. So it's just, I don't know how many seconds is it? Well, it's fi uh, 50, so 15, looks like a 15 second clip actually. So I might just change the composition length to 15 seconds. So it fills the whole thing, right, good. Now we've got mainly reds and whites and blacks in here. Nothing too, uh, nothing involving too many reds and blues, unfortunately. But we'll give this a try and see how it comes out. Uh, so let's export, add this to the render queue. Now I've got to try and find the codecs. I did install them, so hopefully they'll be in there. If I go to QuickTime in here and now go to my format options, I should have the option here. I do, there we go. So here we go, we've got our ProRes codex here. And I'm gonna to go to HQ, because I know that one exists on my Mac. Settings, quality 100, yep. And that's fine. I'm gonna change this to trillions of colors, and that's all good. Right, so let's just specify a place to put it. Windows. ProRes, we'll call that one. All in uppercase. I don't know why I've got this thing about doing certain file names in uppercase and certain ones in lowercase. It's, I don't know, I think it's just something to keeps my eye on it, you know, so it makes me see it more easily on the desktop. So let's uh, encode that one out. I'll just quickly speed this up.
Okay, great. That's done. If I could just minimize After Effects for a second, I can bring that onto the desktop and uh, show you the file. 319 meg, 15 seconds long. And if I go to Media Info, let's take a look at how it comes out. QuickTime, Apple QuickTime, Format ProRes. It does have a writing libra library, which is different. It's got a, write a writing library that specifies the fact that it's mirrors on. 422. I guess one test would be we've got to bring this into DaVinci, haven't we, and check whether it is a 10 bit file or not. Uh, so, what I'll do now, I'm going to get my Mac, which is actually over the other side of the room. So, hang on a second. Well, um, it's over here. No. And I. Oh! He says, I've just hit my leg on the desk. Right, so here we are on the Mac. And this is exactly the same project with exactly the same footage uh, coming through. So the great thing is, of course, that on a Mac, it's completely native. So if we add this to the render queue, go into the encoding settings and the same place we were before, we have Apple ProRes just as part of the operating system. Now, of course, you think, why can't you get ProRes on Windows? Well, it seems to me to be pretty obvious. Why on earth would Apple ever license it? There's just no point, is there? I mean, if, if I want ProRes and I'm thinking, oh, well, I can only do that on a Mac or on an Apple computer, then I'm going to potentially buy one. I might, some people might not but some people might. So it's an easy way to get people to use your computers. So why bother licensing it to anything else? Anybody else, they don't do that for their stuff very easily. Uh, so let's click OK. And I think that's all. I, oh, no, no. Let's change this to trillions of colors. That's what I did on the other one. And that's fine. Good. Test. Yeah, let's put it. Let's put it in the temp in there like that. So let's call this one Mac ProRes and save. Now I don't know how this, how this will compare time-wise. This might take a little bit longer than the uh, Windows computer. <laughs> Not too bad actually, this is just an old 2015 MacBook. Anyway, we'll speed it up. I'll be back in a second. All right, that's it. It's finished. Great, we can uh, close out the Mac side of things now and go back into our NAS drive here. And I think I put it on here uh, as test. Yeah, Mac ProRes, there we go. Right, so we now have our two files, which should both be 15 seconds long. 15 seconds, 15 seconds. And the first thing you notice is that this one is 319 meg big. The Windows one is 319 meg. This one is 216, but let's open them up side by side in media info and get a bit more information on them. Right, let's try and line these up a little bit. So this is the Mac on the left, and this is the Windows version on the right. Apple QuickTime, no problem, exactly the same in the first section. MPEG-4, QuickTime, 2005, 15.3. So different size, 121 megabits per second on the Mac, but 179 megabits per second on the Windows version. Moving down, ProRes, codec ID APCH, that's exactly the same, version 0 all looking okay. So the writing library, of course, changes from Apple to mirrors on there. 50 frames a second, so for both 422. So, you know, they're looking pretty similar. We have matrix coefficients um, of Rec 709 here. And this has got a couple of additional lines here talking about color primaries and transfer characteristics. I have no clue what 
that's all about. But it does mean they're slightly different. And it will mean something to somebody, I'm sure. So not much difference in there, in there at all. Now, another test I'm going to do is open up DaVinci Resolve. And the reason I'm doing this is because when you bring stuff into there, it tells you a little bit. It gives you the properties of the file and tells you the color depth of that file. Let's import some media. Good, we've got both of those in there now. And let's have a look in the bottom right-hand side. So we've got Apple ProRes 422HQ, Apple ProRes 422HQ, bit depth 10, bit depth 10. Okay, so that all looks good. Let's bring those into an actual timeline within DaVinci and go to our color section and we zoom in a little bit on these. Let's close, move down some of these. Let's take off the node section entirely for now and our clips. We don't need that in the gallery and see if we can just move, move things about a bit to give us a bit more room. Um, what I want to, actually, no, I do need my clips, don't I? Because I want to switch between them. What I want to have a look at here is how these two look side by side. So if we sit them at the very start of their respective clips. Right, so there we go. There's the Windows clip. And there's the Mac clip. Now I'm ha I'm struggling to see any difference between them. Uh, let's just zoom into the zoom right in here. You can get right into a thousand percent here. Okay, so. Not really the most scientific test because, well, these sort of things never are. I'm just playing around trying to see what is what. But this looks great. They both look great. I'm going to just open them up in media players on the desktop and see how they look on a... No, not in... Please don't open it in Windows Media Player. There's the Mac version. Again, I appreciate that you probably can't see this because of the uh, quality of YouTube. And there's the Windows version. You know what? I'm struggling to find a difference between them. I, I, they're working all right for me. They're coming into um, DaVinci Resolve. Just one more little test to do. Let's have a look at CPU usage while they're actually being played. Good, right. So while playing the, what I think is the Mac one, but I don't know now, I'm, I'm kind of lost now. We've got 82, pretty, it's pretty steady. It's pretty steady CPU usage of 86% there. Not bad. And let's switch to the other clip and play that. Have I got the same clips in here? Let me just double check this because they are absolutely identical. Mac ProRes and Windows ProRes. Nope. Nope. Definitely got two. Definitely got both in here, as you can see down at the bottom here. I'm gonna once what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put these but both these clips in the description below for you to download. You can take a look at them, see if you can dig something out that looks different between them. But to be honest, for me, that looks quite good. I'm no visual evidence and not even any technical evidence from the stuff the programs are giving me that one is worse than the other. So uh, that's, this is version two of those old mirrors on pro, uh, Codex. But they look all right. Have you used them? Are they are they definitely rubbish? Are they definitely 8-bit? I, I, I don't know anymore because they look okay to me. What do you think? Uh, thanks for watching and yeah, look forward to hearing from you. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.